Silicon Valley, technology, art, green, and sustainability. Welcome to another episode of Silicon Valley Tech, Art, Green, and Sustainability. Today I am honored to have with me a gentleman that's, that's working on something really interesting and, and something that affects us all, although we may not know that it affects us all. Um, Ken McKenzie. Hello. Welcome. And thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Thanks. really excited to, to have you here and that we got to meet you and see your bees that we've got here. Um, tell us about, well, first before we start about the Santa Clara County Bee Guild. Correct. The Santa Clara Valley Beekeepers Guild. Guild. Sure. Before we talk about that, okay. tell us about you and your background. I, I found something interesting about you uh, when we were sitting in the lobby a minute ago. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. About um, where you past worked. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I graduated from Humboldt State with a degree in natural resource planning, and uh, bees kind of fit into that along the path. Um, and um, career wise, um, started working for the Santa Clara Valley Water District. Um, in a number of, of capacities. So I worked there probably 25 years. And in that um, using of my natural resources background, um, also um, I'm an avid gardener, very much um, like growing my own food as much as possible. And along that path, um, just stringing together ideas of nature, ideas of, of um, what I can do, bees came into, the, came into the idea that I'd like to have bees to pollinate my own um, crops in my own yard. And, and you've so never kept bees before? No, or just no. But um, bees fascinated me. They fit in right with, with my, my knowledge and background of nature, my, of, of, of um, insects and, and um, biology. Well, it's interesting that you were at the water district for yeah. that long. I, I would have guessed that you were still working, not retired, and yeah. No, um, I retired in 2011 from the water district okay. and was, at, was keeping bees quite a few years before I retired. But um, now I'm much more aggressive in my beekeeping and, and become an officer with the Santa Clara Valley or Santa Clara Valley Beekeepers Guild, and um, enjoying that a lot. And, that, that's and so you're president of the club. Or? I'm the vice president now, okay. and we'll have elections soon. So. Um, let's pull up the first slide, and mm -hmm. um, on the first slide, I think yeah, there's where we actually met, and I love that sign. So that's your your representation. I think that's the same hive too, or is it a different hive? And then on the on the left yes. there, it talks about um, what you guys do. I actually can't read that without my. You can probably go ahead and read that well, for okay. us. Well, okay. Our our club's about 350 members, and about 100 show up regularly at our monthly meetings. And we meet at 1292 Minnesota Avenue. Okay. Uh, it's Dwell Christian Church. We meet in the basement there. Even <laughs> during the holidays too, or? Um, well, in November, yes. December we have a bar. Um, we have a, like a potluck instead of a regular meeting. At a bar? No, <laughs> not quite. We meet the same place. A potluck, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, the bees are probably dormant then, yeah? Or no? Um, this is California. So no, never and, dormant. And um, not really. Okay. Yeah, they're pretty active year round here. And so you've been a member how long now? Um, since 2008. Okay. So whatever that is, seven years. And how many members are there? About 300. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. It's, it's a good size group. That's a, that's a, yeah. that's a good chunk of... Of, of folks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how many bees do those folks keep then? Um, the membership varies quite a bit to where um, many people like me are hobbyists and so we'll have anywhere from one. I have 25 hives so we'll, we'll vary in the number of hives we manage um, but a few of our members are commercial beekeepers and some of them have up to a thousand hives and so that's a commercial beekeeping is a very different um, style of beekeeping and the eco economics of it are very different and the practices are different. Okay, and so you meet regularly, yes. and is it like the first Tuesday of the month? Or first Monday of the month. First Monday, yeah. okay. Uh -huh. yes. And they can go to the website and get information about that. And then also, yes. it was interesting, I think we'll mention this again later, but there was a, a list of some of the, the members who mm -hmm. will help people. Sure. Um, but before we go there, I'm gonna pull up another slide, and mm -hmm. we're gonna start talking about pollination. And sure. this is this is a wonderful slide. Um, you provided some of this stuff. And, and in the bottom, too, I want to point out to people that there's tidbits on your site. So mm -hmm. when you see the little, the B sign at the bottom, that's something from your site. And there's sure. actually a list about facts, factoids, tidbits. Yeah. We can pull that down, um, which was really great. So pollination. Well, a plug for our website, too. Okay. Because um, on the website is many links to other stuff. A lot of information about bees. 
And what you mentioned um, is it's called a swarm list. Okay. Now I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. But within pollination, um, that's one of the key reasons I started beekeeping was my own selfish pollination, a want for pollination. But my interest is very similar to the colony of bees. In the colony, you have a single bee, but the bee doesn't survive without the rest of the, of the organ. It's a super organism. No one's in charge, and they act independently. When I wanted pollination for myself, I have kiwis as one of my plants in my backyard. And kiwis normally grow in clusters of three, and, every, and there's usually one large kiwi and a couple of small ones. I would, um, I'm a gardener, but I would never attempt to grow kiwis, so that's they're interesting. They're really easy, okay. really easy. It, okay. it, they grow wonderful here. But so, um, after I got my bees, um, I'm harvesting my kiwis. They harvest about now, Thanksgiving time, and all three fruits are the same size. And I go, wow, it's a good year. Okay, and I, I should know better. So then, then the next year, I'm harvesting my kiwis, and I go, all three fruits are the same size. They go, <laughs> oh, what bees do when they pollinate, they visit every flower, and they fully connect all the anthers so the fruit fully pollinates. So instead of having one large fruit and two smaller ones, I had three fully formed fruit. So pollination really enhances each of the flowers on the plant. So selfishly, I like that. Commercial in, in America, we need um, bees to pollinate the way we do agriculture now. And so for a farmer to get full um, economic viability from his fields, he needs complete pollination. So we're having to now bring bees into, into our crops to, to pollinate them. Now is that except for tomatoes, did I read? Uh, tomatoes are buzz pollinated. Okay. The bumblebees like them. Okay. Bumblebees latch on to the flower and they beat their wings and the frequency of their wings pops the, the, the pollen from the tomato. So, Interesting. Yeah. So they're okay. buzz pollinated. So yeah. I don't have enough bumblebees in my yard because the tomatoes are, well actually we had a lot of tomatoes but they're different sizes. And yeah, this year was different. a weird year for my tomatoes too. They so. Pretty good crop yeah. though. Oh. Um, so let's pull up another uh, mm -hmm. slide with the pollination. And, and this was, you had a lot of great slides but this one was beautiful. So sure, sure. So this is a, 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 a bee pollen basket. Yes. With the, bee, the bees are really cute, cool in, in a number of aspects. Because they're an insect with six legs, you know, that, that hind leg has very large, large spines on it that are long. And so what the bee's doing, the plant draws it in for, for nectar. And as the bee's looking for the treat of nectar, it's getting pollen all over its body. And so it's smearing the pollen around. It's going to take it to another plant, even cross pollinate. But the bee wants that pollen too. It mixes a little bit of, sh of, of honey, and then it puts it on those hind legs. Even the front leg of the bee has a little notch on it because they get pollen all over their antenna. And they want to use their antenna for smelling and also they can hear from it. So they'll clean their, their antenna off with that notch in their front leg. But, but so, so the basket there, yeah. that's where they mainly, and it looks like it's so full. Does it actually get fuller than that? Yeah. Okay, we can pull that down too. And what's, what's really fun too is that color yellow is on mm -hmm. that bee. Pollen in your hive can be multiple colors because the plant's purple and yellow and, and white. That's awesome. It is pretty cool. It's a, you know, I think we had we had a hive a couple of years ago that a friend brought, mm -hmm. and he had um, he I don't know if he belongs to your association, but he had taken the hive from a building that was was pu being pulled down, yes, and it was between yes. the walls, uh -huh. and he had it as at his place with his hives for about three months, and then he brought it over and three four months. And then he left it there, and we couldn't find a time for him to come over and check on it with my dog. And mm -hmm. what ended up happening is they exited. We have the creek in the backyard, and yep. I guess they yep. found some wood or something, which is, I guess, very common, yeah, mm -hmm. for bees to. They often just die. Oh. Sometimes I do removals as well, and it's very difficult to get it successfully transferred from where they've been. You tear their home apart, and when the when the the social organism of of the colony is disturbed. That's where you get colony collapse, or the, the, the whole colony can, can fail. And so it's very delicate to move one, but we do it all the time. So I'm going to pull up another slide, and sure. the next question is, how mm -hmm. many um, varieties of bees are there? Okay. And um, I think this is another little tidbit on the side here that people can read. Um, so for the valley, how, let's pull that down. Um, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Maybe 50, we, we have California numbers. I went to UC Davis trying to get numbers from them. They don't know either. You know what, 1,500 varieties in could, California. Could be, or 17, you don't, you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, something like that. Which is just incredible. And I mean, like, well, I think there's one bee, and I read your website, and there's 1,500 or 1,700, yeah. The, the bee we've been looking at in these, these are European bees, okay? These are not native to America. You know, they came in 1621 with the pilgrims. And so the, what we're talking about, and the, 
research isn't doing fair yet for the native bees. And most of the research that's happening on bee diseases and colony collapse and things is for European socialized honeybees. Those numbers are, are native bees mostly. And that's a great area of research is happening now. More, more is happening. I'm going to pull up another slide mm -hmm. too. This is, I think this is a, another, um, yes, so there's, the, you've yes. got three bees here. Tell us about this. 